So this weekend, we had some guests over, including my brother-in-law, and uh, he likes to cook and I like to cook. And I have this uh, Inkbird wireless thermometer system where you can put four probes into it, and then you can monitor the temperature of each of the probes on this uh, remote device here. And it's got fantastic range. I mean, they claim 1,500 feet, but I've had it uh, out in, in the pit where me and the dog go for a walk, which is almost, uh, almost a kilometer and a half away. And so, uh, and it works there. So I can see if I have to run back or anything like that. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really handy to have. It's quite accurate and I, I really like it. And he, he asked me, well, how, how is it well made and what's inside it? And so I'm going to have a look today. And it gives me a chance to spend more time uh, working with this. And I do plan to do a video on this and, and uh, you know, give you a review of it. This is this uh, camera I got. It's a no name camera. Uh, but it seems so far to be pretty good, but it has some drawbacks and I'm working around those and I'm going to give you a full report of that at some point. But let's tear these things down. Let's take them apart and uh, have a look inside them. Now, another thing I picked up here are these uh, screwdrivers. These look like Phillips screwdrivers. You can see the tips on them, but they're not. Uh, what they are is Japanese industrial standard. So I don't know if they're actually called Phillips Japanese industrial standard or just Japanese industrial standard but if you have anything made in the Orient it's a very very good chance that the screws are not regular Phillips that they're JIS and having JIS screwdrivers really is it's like night and day uh, you never jump out of the screw everything seems to fit just wonderfully worth getting I got them uh, years and years ago a much bigger set than this for working on on motorcycles especially ones like Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, Yamaha. Some of the other brands also use, uh, when they use Phillips-like heads, they use JIS, but definitely all the Japanese manufacturers do. So they're really good to have, but those are too big for down here in the, in the lab. So I've got this set of uh, four little ones. Uh, if anybody's interested in looking at that set, I'll leave a link to it. I got them off of Amazon. And okay, so this has got a, obviously got the battery all right, well, it looks like a nice little board in there. Let's see if I can get the battery. Don't tell me these little things are. Okay, there we go. Now I think I have a battery around about that size. It's, it's taped down, I can't see the amp hour rating on it, but it looks a lot like, no, this one's a bit bigger. And this one here is 1200 milliamp hours. So that's probably about 800 milliamp hours. Just a guess. It looks like it's got the, protection built into it, a little circuit board for the top of it. No, no, it's not. It's just terminals. So it would have the protection built in here. So if you were to replace the battery, you would go with one without any protection on it. Okay, it's a couple more screws here. Uh, it looks like a bigger slot in them. So it's got a nice gasket around it. Now these are they're IPX6 rated, which means uh, they're splash proof. I mean, you, you could probably leave them out in the rain or something like that, but you, you, shouldn't, put a, you shouldn't submerge them or maybe even put a fire hose on them. Might be a bad idea, but they're, they're fairly waterproof. I have left it out in the rain, no problems at all. Now the reason I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to get the board out because I was thinking that you know that uh, that USB-C connector here for the recharging kind of fits through the gasket so maybe maybe it'll come out oh yeah comes out fine okay I didn't do that this looks the radio here with an antenna that antenna leads me to believe that we're dealing with something here that's in the looks like it might be in the 300 to 400 megahertz range and on that side all we have is the display which is stayed up to the stay down there this is the backlight for the display and then this the little switches so let's let's just put this nicely back down into place hope that a zebra connection is a good one to finish and then I'm just going to look at these chips here so we've got this chip here we've got this chip I don't know what that is. And then we've got the radio module, which seems to be a separate item.
better screwdriver for these screws. Well, that's one screw I'm gonna have to go looking for. So let's get this now underneath the uh, microscope there. And we'll have a look at uh, what some of these chips are. Here, let me get that up on the screen for you. Yeah, can we make out that number there? The whole tech chip. HT67R4892. Okay, so that uh, that's a whole tech microcontroller. I'll put a spec sheet for it up there for you and uh, link to it down in, in the description. So that's a microcontroller there. And this here, I think that I know what that is. Trouble here getting that under the, so we're gonna have to do it at an angle. Yeah, so that's a C4056A. We looked that one up. I think that that's a, ch a charge controller chip. And these, there's a diode. And a transistor there. That diode's probably for reverse polarity protection, I would guess. And then this big thing here, doesn't have a number on it, but it's marked BZ1. And then over here on the radio module, we got an AMX14085. Okay. Yeah, okay, you know, it seems to be very well built. That's a nice PCB. It looks like they've taken some care in making it. It seems to me to be fairly well laid out. And they've used nice components. Now, if you look at the numbers here, so this is a 4SRX receiver, I guess, and Inkbird, July 2019. It's pretty nicely done. These are not terribly expensive devices. I think I... I I probably paid about a hundred dollars for it, if I'm not mistaken. I think well worth that. I mean, if you look at the the price of something like a brisket these days, a decent brisket, and you ruin that, uh, you've basically a, a brisket's run going to run you about a hundred bucks. So it pays for itself in in providing one decent cook. And I use it for all sorts of things. I use it for ribs and roasts and briskets and everything. I use it on the smoker, I use it in the barbecue, I use it in the oven. Very versatile. One of the things I've noticed about that microscope so far is that, um, well, it's great at close focusing. It's not really great at getting a, a more distant view of things. They claim that that lens there is a zoom lens, but it, it's not. It, it is just a close focus lens. It's got very good focus range. But the post on the stand here, I don't know if you can see that, stand here at the back the post is very it's not very long so we can't get far enough away from the uh, the device to get a small enough image of it so you can see a bit more of it so it's so far it's been very good for very good for extreme close-up work but uh, not so good when you want to back off a bit So oh, I've been thinking, you know, there could be different ways to do that. I could get a true zoom lens for it, but the ones I've found so far won't work with the, the way that this lens attaches to that mount. And I'll show you that in the upcoming video. And um, another way would be to increase the height of this post. And there's a couple of ways I could do that. I, I, can't find anybody to supply me with another post. It's, it's a very special aluminum post with it, with a gear machined into it. So I can't just go out and buy one of those at the corner store. But what I could do is I could modify the base. And this, uh, 
this goes down far enough that I can actually touch the base. I never need to touch the base. So I could raise the base up so I can get down to the absolute minimum focusing distance. And that would give me a little bit more height on it, which would allow me to see things from further away. But I really think the best thing, the best solution would be a proper zoom lens. So I can just zoom out. So my first efforts are going to be to continue to look for a proper zoom lens. Okay, similar sort of arrangement. Oh, it looks like exactly the same size battery. So if you get one of them, the battery is gone on it. More than likely, the battery, another one will be going soon, so order two of them. There we go. It's a bit simpler in a way. Similar looking uh, radio module there. Similar size antenna. Okay, let's have a look here. Okay, I'm seeing HT HT six seven F four eight nine two. And uh, on the transmitter. So again, uh, the transmitter here looks like it's really well made. Got the waterproofing, everything else. Let's um, let's put this one back together, and then I'm going to get a little spectrum analyzer out. Okay, so we got that. Uh, we got the antenna on there. I don't think this has anything to do with it here. So right now, no, that's not the right frequency range. Let's uh, let's set the frequency range up. Let's uh, let's put the start at uh, 300 megahertz, and we we'll put the stop at say 450 megahertz. Because I think it's it's either 315 or 433 megahertz, judging by the size of the antenna. Okay, we've got something here at about three. There we go. There we go. So when that light comes on, we got a big peak up here. So that would be 433. Let's narrow this down here a little bit. Let's put the start up at 420. And for 433 would be 13 more than that. So we go 13 higher. So that would be 26 so we'll go to 4 446 so now we should see the spike come up right about in the middle here when it comes on yep there we go okay so running at 433 megahertz which is one of those uh, bands where you can put low power unlicensed equipment on it you get a lot of stuff around your house your garage door opener and you know, remote controls and stuff like that that work on radio frequencies, they're generally in this band here. Let's see if we can catch it again. Yep, there we go. Okay. All right, so now I can tell my brother-in-law it's uh, not only a, a instrument that works fairly nicely, but it's uh, also fairly inexpensive. It's well-built, well-designed, and it uses a standard frequency. Very nice. All right, folks, that's really all I had to, to do today. I just wanted to get that done, to let him know he was, he was looking forward to maybe buying one of these. And so I can give him my recommendation. I'll leave a, a link to this down in the description below and a, a link to these uh, screwdrivers. I got both of them off Amazon, so that's, that's uh, convenient. And uh, thanks for coming out to join me today. Appreciate it very much, as I said, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.